So what we're going to cover, Ryan's going to cover some lathe updates. Then he's going to pass it back to me. I'm going to go over some of the Sandvik Prime turn. Then we're going to get into mill turn, kind of depending on our crowd here today. We'll ask some poll questions to make sure we can make this pertinent for everybody that is here because we have a fairly small group today. So, you know, feel free to keep this interactive and ask questions. We'll get into multi-axis, the simulator enhancements, and then finally we'll get into some tool management. So before we get started here, I'm going to launch a poll that'll pop up on your screen. And I want to get an idea of what version of Mastercam everybody's using. So it's going to pop up on your screen right about now. And please answer if you can. Looks like we got a lot of people that have already jumped into 2018 here. A few of you still on 2017. And, uh, yeah. It looks like everyone has answered. So let's move on here. I can close the poll. And so just a little bit before I pass it to Ryan, you know, some of you might have been on my first webinar, but, you know, 2017 was our big jump in interface. It was about the third, arguably the fourth interface since Mastercam started in the mid 80s. And with that 2017 release, you know, while there was some new stuff, you know, most of the focus was on getting that interface ready for prime time. And now with 2018 that we have all that set, we can start, you know, A, fine tuning the interface, but also getting into other areas, you know, enhancing Mastercam and getting back to our customer requests and things like that. And I don't have it on the slide here, but, uh, What's new.mastercam.com is the full mini website of everything that's been updated. There's also a PDF that'll install with 2018, but Mastercam's nice enough to put together a lot of these slides as kind of templates for us, and then we can modify them from there. But, you know, they start out with about 500 slides of every little thing that's new, and we try to pick out the stuff that we feel that's pertinent to our customers. But... Remember, you can always go to that website and really dive deeper into everything that's been updated in this version. So Mastercam really had three main focus areas for this release. And one is performance. And, you know, that's just making the software faster. And, you know, how, how quickly the tool pass calculate, how quickly do large models come into Mastercam, how quickly do solid operations happen. And, you know, now that we have this updated interface, we're allowed to really enhance a lot of that kind of background performance that you don't necessarily see. But, you know, I have one of those new M2 style solid state drives in my laptop and pretty decent specs. And I've definitely noticed the performance difference in 18 over 17 in certain functions. And then the next one here is visualization. So, you know, how, how does the software look and feel to use? So you'll see that in the other webinar I had the recording of, you know, we're moving a lot of commands to what we call the panel interface where things are moving to the left-hand side of the screen there where, you know, you, you get better tool tips when you hover over items and so forth. And I think you guys will see a little bit of that today, even in the enhancements we cover on this side of the software. And that leads me to my third point, which is usability. You know, when you launch a certain command in Mastercam, how easy is it to figure out? Uh, a lot of this will be touched on when Ryan covers the multi-axis portion. And I can't stress this enough, but, you know, when I was at the dealer conference back in May, only about 5% of our users click that little checkbox when you install Mastercam to join the customer experience feedback program. And, you know, it's completely anonymous. All it tracks is how many times you're clicking on functions in Mastercam. And when you're in those functions, what parameters are you using the most? So, for instance, when Ryan gets into multi-axis, we found that, you know, there were a ton of stuff on the collision checking page that no one was ever using. So we combined a bunch of stuff from other pages that were buried deeper in the settings to get more things onto a single screen that most people use. And so the more people we have signing up for that program and getting feedback, the better we can tailor the system. 
And that leads me to my final point on this before I pass it over to Ryan is that, you know, please feel free to give us feedback on the software. A lot of the enhancements I covered in the previous webinar and the ones we'll be covering today are direct requests from customers. So if you notice something in the software, you're either going to get an R or a D number and an R is a request or a D is a defect. So whether it's an issue in the software or something that you feel that it could just do better, you know, Mastercam still a 150 people out in town in Connecticut that listen to our customers. You know, we're not publicly traded. We're still family owned and users are number one in our eyes. So the better we can make the software for you guys, the better it's all going to be for all of us. So with that being said, I am going to make Ryan the presenter and we'll get into the meat of this. Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Ryan Mermel. Uh, today we're gonna be going over some of the enhancements, uh, starting off first on the turning side of things. So let's go ahead and uh, dive into it and, and get started here. So starting off first, we have a enhancement called section turning. So this is going to be in the roughing uh, toolpath of Mastercam lathe. It allows you to safely machine uh, thin parts with greater ease to turn maybe difficult machining materials uh, such as you know alloys or uh, plastics. Uh, it really gives a lot of good toolpath control when uh, enabling. Um, either the number of cuts, the exact length, or equal lengths uh, of the cut. It, it uh, allows you to be really flexible um, on how much stock is, uh, is cut across with that toolpath. So another one, too, is going to be the dynamic roughing. Um, if you've used this toolpath, you would have noticed that prior to 2018, uh, dynamic turning was allowed uh, back cutting and um, some of the geometry could have had some over engagement. So it made some changes as far as the angles are concerned in there for the um, back cutting. So that way it does a retract instead of uh, maybe colliding with the shank of your tool. So if you use the dynamic roughing option, it's definitely going to be a, a setting you're wanting to pay attention to. Another one in here is too is, is chip break. So chip break was added in uh, a couple versions ago here, uh, first introduced in, in 2017 actually. Um, it's really been expanded to include both the facing and the finishing toolpath types. Um, it is going to be improving some of the program flexibility, particularly with uh, more challenging and stringy materials such as you know aluminum or plastics. Uh, it's going to be uh, a good function um, that is well suited for plastics and heard a lot of good feedback um, with that. So uh, some of the options you can see here, we do have an option for a dwell. And then of course, either how often do we want to do that chip break, um, either in a length of cut or time and cut um, itself. Some other options, uh, especially in the finish side of things, is going to be the speeds and feeds for a semi-finish. Uh, so in 2018, we expanded out this, uh, this dialog box. Definitely gives you a lot more toolpath control and flexibility uh, within your standard roughing toolpath. Uh, there's just gonna be a quick little tick box. You can turn on your uh, feed rate and spindle speed in order to set those settings properly. Another enhancement is going to be uh, dealing with the grooving, um, particularly in the face type of grooves. Um, in previous versions, the initial plunge position uh, did not uh, adjust for equal amounts of material on either side. Um, however, in 2018, the uh, 
uh, initial plunge position accounts for equal width passes so that the same amount of material is, is more consistent um, across the part there. Uh, doing so will uh, will also improve tool life and, uh, and wear of your tools, uh, and the new strategy will automatically calculate the step over so that the equal cuts are automatically taken. Also with the grooving, we've added in a couple other options. Uh, Semester Cam 2018 does uh, introduce a new cutting um, option, so if you pull down the cut direction uh, drop down menu. The uh, the options that are gonna be um, showing up there now are the bi-directional, um, positive and negative first, uh, as well as the chain direction. So a couple other options in there that we've added in order to give better and more control over your tool and how the tool is cutting that part. We've also expanded a lot with the stock model support for lathe. You may have used stock models on the mill side of things. However, uh, in 2017, we uh, we added in some of the stock model support and again expanded that out in 2018. Um, we can now support part transfers uh, for the stock model to really get an accurate display representation of how that part is from the main spindle and now on to the sub-spindle. And then of course, uh, lastly here for the lathe is gonna be a tool inspection. Uh, so we've added in support for both the roughing and facing. Uh, common parameter settings for the conditions are used with the, uh, the tool inspection uh, will occur here. So. Um, again, we either have an option for a length of cut or a timing cut, uh, either at the end of the operation or a number of passes or sections on how we can specify when to retract and do a tool inspection. So that's going to go ahead and complete it for the lay side of things here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and pass this back over to Matt. Hi everyone, I'm back. We're going to talk about Sandvik Prime turning here. Before I do that, let's launch another interactive poll, which is always fun. So have you heard of Prime turning? Okay, I think we got, okay, most everyone's voted here. I'll close that out. So kind of what I was seeing at the in-person rollouts, a handful of you have heard of it, a handful, most of you haven't. We did get a couple people saying the prime what in there. So Sandvik prime turning, what is it? It's basically a new style of turning and there's a really good about two minute YouTube video on this and videos don't play that well on these webinars but I certainly invite you to Google prime turn and Sandvik has a nice short video that talks about it but the short story of it is there's basically two types of tools the one on the screen right now is called the B type which is more of a heavy duty roughing tool style and then there's a smaller a type that's a three-sided tool and sandvik was nice enough to reach out to us before this was ever public knowledge where we were able to develop a tool pass suite inside of mastercam 18 and it's currently a c hook because sandvik's still doing a lot of figuring out on this as well and as they get more and more real world testing we can start adding options into the software a lot faster when it's a C hook. So there was even an update to prime turning, oh, about a month ago that added some new entry and exit uh, speed and feed options into the software. 
And we are the exclusive partner on these style of tool pass through the end of the year. So I'm sure the other cam companies will start to try to catch up. But as of right now, you have this option or there's a very basic sort of straight line programmer that Sandvik can set people up with. But since all you guys are Mastercam customers, it is a free add-on for anyone that has the Lathe package in 2018. And the way to get it is to just reach out to us and ask for the download. So you can email sales or tech at Shopware and we can get you all the files and all the tool libraries are already set up as well. So it's a really kind of plug and play set up. And I've had a few local customers here in Illinois that have gone to some events at machine tool vendors and went right back and started using it after they talked with their Sandvik rep. And the it's been a resounding positive experience for everyone that's already given it a shot. I kind of liken it to what dynamic milling was like about seven to eight years ago where everyone was like, what the heck is this? It doesn't seem that there'd be any benefit. You know, I'm cutting away from the chuck. I'm going to pull my material out and destroy my machine. But Sandvik has a lot of good recommendations on work holding and items like that. So it follows the programming suite in Mastercam follows all of the prime turning rules in there. And without getting too much into the nitty gritty of this, it, they, they basically want different speeds and feeds depending on where the cut is and whether it's doing a conventional or a standard type cut. And it talks about just, I spoke about this already, but the tool library is already in there and the holders, whether it's Capto, Shank, or the Sandvik QS style are all in there. And it works in both lathe and mill turn. This is a slide on where all the tool, where the files are all located. And I more just have this in here for when people want to go back to the recording and reference where all the files are. But basically in your Mastercam folder is all the files that actually make it run. And then your shared directory under lathe or mill turn tools is where all the tool libraries are where you're used to seeing them in lathe. And these are all the different tools and holders that are already in there. And again, another slide that people can just pause the video on if they really want to get into product numbers and after talking to their Sandvik rep on what tools we already have set up in Mastercam. And then when you add it into Mastercam, you basically have to go right click in anywhere in the blank spot in the ribbon bar and say customize the ribbon bar. You can add a group or you can add it to an existing group in your lathe toolbars, for example, which should be where I would recommend to put it. And then you, on the left-hand side here, you say commands not in the ribbon and look for prime turning. It's in alphabetical order. And then you can click add and it'll add it to the toolbar section that, that you want. It does handle, you have to have, you know, some of the latest stuff you can do without a stock setup, but you do need a stock setup in order for the prime turning to work. Most people I know that run lathe set up stock anyway, so it's typically not a problem, but just be mindful that you want to make sure you have your stock defined when you're doing these types of tool paths. And we have all the different strategies that prime turn allows set up in Mastercam already. So they have a bunch of different ways to cut. You know, do you want to cut only away from the chuck? Do you want to go both the prime direction or the conventional cut, you know, face or vertical? And there's finishing and roughing style. So like when I was talking about with this B style tool, you can do the quote unquote prime cutting away from the chuck with the heavy end of the insert. And then you can come back and conventionally finish. And if you have a mill turn style machine, you can basically tilt the B axis up five degrees and you can even get a better surface finish with that B type roughing tool. And that's what I talk about a little bit on this slide here. But uh, yeah, that tool angle you can set you can really get a nicer finish. We were doing one over at DMG Mori, and I believe it was a 32 RA with the B type. So it was a pretty darn smooth finish with a tool that Sandvik defines as a rough only tool. 
And when we're doing facing, we can do the up cutting or down cutting and there's settings in Mastercam to adjust the speeds and feeds. I don't want to get into the weeds too deep on this. We had the Sandvik people out at the events talking about this a little more, but they're obviously not here today. But this is a short video on just going through the workflow of this. So you, you can set the tool angle if you're in a mill turn style machine. And then once you get through those settings, you pick what sort of strategy you want. So I'm going to pause the video here real quick. You have the horizontal and then all the alternating or horizontal then vertical. Because the main thing behind this prime turning is the tools can cut in all four lathe directions. They get more into the settings there. And this is more stuff that you'd want to get into once you actually start using this. But let's try to get to the point where the tool pass on the screen. So it's going to approach and then cut in what they consider the prime direction and then come back with a conventional on, on the face there, depending on the amount of material it's going to remove and so forth. Let's skip this one too. You get the rough and finish, horizontal roughing strategy. I'm going to skip past a couple of these because I'd rather just show you guys inside of Mastercam. Let's hop over there real quick instead of PowerPointing you to death. So I have a file programmed here, the, the one you saw in the video. And if I turn my tool path on here, you'll see. So my settings in here are I'm using a, a B type tool and I have it as just a horizontal roughing strategy and then this is where you're really going to want to talk to your Sandvik reps on sort of what that particular tool based on the material can handle as far as a depth of cut is concerned but you know from what I've seen real world sort of stuff the material removal rate can be anywhere from two to a hundred times similar to how dynamic mill works and that you can really reduce your production time by switching to tools like these and you can get by with a lot less tool changes. But the tool is going to come in. I can turn on the holder here too if I want. It's a Capto tool. So it's going to come in and move towards the chuck. It, it arc enters into the part and then basically wipes away the material. So you got a really long cutting edge here to where you can really get heavy deeper cuts so, you know, you also want to be mindful of the horsepower of your machine. You know, if you have a little 10 horsepower tool room lathe, I would not recommend it. Or you just have to take a lot shallower cuts, which then you're not really being able to take advantage of what these tools can do. So it comes back in. So it does all the roughing. And then we go back in the other direction on the next tool path, I believe, to do a finish. And we're coming back with, now this is the A type, which is the three-sided tool. And it can come back and finish it out there. And let's play this video here. Just a few more examples of, I got some real world stuff here. This is from when we were doing the Mazak rollout in Illinois. Hopefully it's not too choppy on your guys' screen. I know videos don't come through all that great, but uh, hopefully you can see the chips flying off there. But you know, we're doing uh, 1018 steel. At a hundred surface or a thousand surface feet, with a 2.1 millimeter depth of cut, and uh, at another one of the shows we did over at Haas, we actually had to only end up running the demo about once an hour because we realized we'd run out of material because it was running through it too quickly. So a couple things in the setup here, you know, if you have short parts under, I would say about six inches and just a standard chuck with good gripping force, this is a good application. 
But really where it comes to shine is when you're using a tailstock or a center of some sort. You know, even if you have, we were running one up at the Wisconsin rollout in Milwaukee, and we actually had a center built into the sub spindle where we were able to get some more rigidity onto the part. And any of those of you that have the Milturn product, Milturn supports steady rests and center type tools now in 2018, which Ryan will get into. And as this video is finishing up here, does anyone have any questions on the prime turn? I know it's kind of a crash course in what this is able to do, but uh, really the workflow or next steps if you want to get started on this would be if you are using Sandvik tooling currently to talk to your rep and say, hey, I want to check this out. They have sample tools. I, I know they've been providing some of our customers and can come out and do an assessment of your setup. Um, or if you just want to get started on the Mastercam side, again, to just reach out to us and we can hook you up with the downloads for this add-on. And remember, it's free, so you just have to email us. Yes. So I'm going to launch one more poll before I pass it over to Ryan. I want to get an idea of how many people have Milturn style machines, because if we don't have anybody on the webinar going over that stuff. I don't want to waste your guys' time. So a mill turn machine is, you know, like an integrex style or something with an upper B, lower turret, or twin turret, twin spindle style machines, and so forth. Okay, so yeah, we, we do have a, a good amount of people in here with mill turn style equipment, so... That's your go ahead to show all that stuff, Ryan. And let me pass it back over to him. All right, I am back. And so since we do have quite a few people that uh, that do have Milturn machines, we'll go ahead and, and go through some of the slides here. So starting off with the Milturn, a lot of the standard lathe enhancements are gonna be carried over to the Milturn. So that is going to be considering the prime turning, any of the section turning, dynamic turning, chip break, semi-finish, and grooving. So again, everything is being brought over to the mill turn that was on the standard lathe. One of the nice things is the job setup with the stock pole for the spindle. So in previous versions of Mastercam, the stock poles could only do could only be done by the right spindle. Uh, however, in Mastercam 2018, we do support the left spindle to uh, start the job in and pull it off and end in the left spindle. So this is going to be improving your part programming and flexibility and offer a little bit more control on how you can process those hard parts. Kind of tying in with that too is going to be the job setup. So we now allow you to define manually your right spindle stock in Mastercam 2018. The stock definition can simply be uh, programmed uh, since the opposing stock now can be brought over. So in a sense, we can go ahead and pull in STL files and give ourselves a, a more accurate simulation by having a stock set up in the left versus having to depend on, uh, or I'm sorry, set up in the right instead of having to depend on how it was set up in the main spindle. I just have a quick video again. I'm not sure how well this is going to be kind of coming over here, but we'll uh, we'll take a shot on it. Uh, maybe. Uh, 
All right, doesn't look like my uh, my video is working, so we'll go ahead and we'll skip that there. This is going to be a live uh, kind of a live preview of how to set up some of those settings, but again, not working. So we'll also go ahead and skip over that guy. And then, of course, uh, part handling is going to be a big thing, too. Uh, we've added in the functionality to put in two separate parts now. So beforehand, we were only allowed to have one part, and we could go ahead and program that part on the main and the sub. However, in 2018, we now allow you to do two separate parts. So if you have an upper and a lower turret, you can independently process uh, both those parts at the same time to really help out with your utilization of the machine and uh, give yourself a little bit more flexibility there. Again, another video, but I don't think this one is going to work either. Unfortunately not. And then of course, the, uh, the last thing here is gonna be the center and tail stock support. The new support with this is going to be automated um, on kind of how the part handling features and uh, is really going to be simplifying uh, the usage of the tail stocks and the uh, steady rest things like that um, if you go under the drop down tab you will see all the different options and again this is only in the mill turn license with uh, with a machine environment But otherwise, we can go ahead and jump into the multi-axis side of things. So with the multi-axis, we've added in a new function called multi-axis dropping. It's a strategy that can convert a three-axis toolpath to a five-axis instead. The function uh, essentially projects that 2D or 3D toolpath onto a surface and automatically calculates the, the five axis motion that it needs to apply. The feature can not only just simplify the five axis programming, but really give you alternative strategies to use with the uh, dynamic motion for the multi axis uh, machining there. You may have noticed when uh, when programming in the multi-axis side of things that you could sometimes run into re reliability issues when creating uh, maybe a curved tool pass such as a, a morph or a parallel. This is more evident with trimmed uh, surface geometry due to tolerancing issues and gaps between those surfaces you were uh, machining and chaining. Uh, internally, the master cam is changed some of the algorithms and recalculated some of the processes on how things are calculated in order to give you a closer and better cut tolerance uh, window as far as cutting the edges of your parts. Another one too is gonna be the step over calculation. So again, in previous versions when creating a morph or maybe even a parallel tool path, you could run into situations where your tool path had a non-uniform uh, step overs or maybe some inconsistencies there. Uh, sometimes you would maybe notice some unusual motion. So there's a complete rewrite to the tool path and that is going to be cover covering uh, Toolpaths such as curves using like a parallel or a morph. And again, you can see here when the 2017 versus 2018 on how that rewrite definitely helped. We've also added in some multi axis tool control. So again, when using a curve style of toolpath, uh, particularly you would notice this in a trimming or maybe even a robotic uh, application, we can go ahead and, and specify the distance from a curve to the line that's affected the tool orientation. It's gonna be producing more of a predictable result and much smoother motion when you go ahead and create these tool paths now.
Another one's going to be on the tool axis control page. So under any of the more parallel along curves, maybe triangular mesh or even a project curve tool path in 2018, we've added in a new option to that tool control page that specifies or allows you to specify a uniform tilt angle. The option really allows you to generate smoother motion and keeping the machine uh, tipped at that specific angle so that we are not moving the motion all the way around and give you something consistent. Also on that tool access control page, we've allowed you to have a function now that is called out as a maintain tilt. The option is only going to be available when the tool axis control page is set to a fixed angle to access. But the setting is now going to be keeping the tool tilted during any retract or feed moves to re reduce any excess uh, tool and machine motion. And then of course with the multi-axis control page, this one I kind of wish the video was working, but we uh, really looked at the feedback we were getting, kind of what Matt was talking about with the feedback program when you first install Mastercam. And we've really redesigned the entire page here. Uh, beforehand, we would have had three and four uh, for the collision control strategies, and we've now moved that over to additional pages and moved some of the popular functions that you guys have been using over to this main collision control page. That way, everything's front and center for you. You're not having to open up and look in additional menus. Otherwise, one of the last things here is going to be the multi-axis linking. You may have noticed this as a tool path in previous versions of Mastercam, but we've added in some additional functionality here uh, since we've originally re re released that in 2017 uh, to really optimize how the shape of our parts is and give us a nice linking between tool path to tool path uh, in a multi-axis type of setting. And then along with that multi-axis linking, we've added in some safety zones that has been kind of redesigned in the new version of Mastercam. It's going to be uh, using a familiar bounding box type of workflow uh, in the panel interface that you may have used for like a, a stock model. And it's really going to be simplifying the process on how to define that safety zone. Uh, in addition, though, the safety zone now does respect transforms and account for transform toolpath when uh, when we're processing each operation. So that's all I had on the multi-axis. We can go ahead and jump into the simulator next here. One of the big things is going to be tying in the machine simulation with the simulator and the verify. So in previous versions of Mastercam, the machine simulator was available, um, but added in as a application. Uh, now, a, uh, a new lighter weight of the machine simulation has been incorporated into the Mastercam Verify. So if you go into the Verify, you will now notice an option for that machine simulation. Uh, there also is some settings we can go ahead and set up as far as what machine do we need to pull and put in any information such as fixturing and how the part is orientated there. Another nice one too is gonna to be a bookmark. So in 2018, we've added in the functionality for bookmarks. So along the process of verifying, we can go ahead and create a bookmark as far as where maybe do we wanna go back and take a look at uh, in the specific verify. It really saves you time as far as finding where you need to go back because you're creating it automatically on the fly there. So really gives you a lot of functionality. Um, however, it is going to be just for the one occurrence of Verify. So if you do shut down, the bookmarks are not gonna be saved with that. You are able to add, clear, um, or even clear all your bookmarks at any time too. 
Along with this, we can go ahead and create a presentation. So we've only had this functionality in the machine simulation before. However, uh, in 2017, we've added in the option to create a video, uh, but now in 2018, we've added in the options to create an actual presentation. So it's going to be saving a machine simulation um, as a actual executable file that we can go ahead and open up on any computer. You do not need a Mastercam license for it. And you can go ahead and play, stop, rewind, even pan or zoom to see exactly what's going on. And then kind of the last section of my presentation is also gonna be the tool management. So you may have seen uh, a little bit as far as the machining cloud and also the uh, Sandvik Coral Plus tool library. However, starting off first with the inch and metric tools, I believe Matt touched on this a little bit in his first uh, webinar presentation, so I won't go too much in depth with it. But um, we've added in the options to allow you to mix and match inch and metric tools in the same file before. That was a, kind of a big no-no and things would be out of scale. But uh, we're now able to bring in both of those in one Mastercam file. But more importantly here, we have the Coral Plus tool library support from Sandvik. It allows us to import directly 3D milling uh, tools coming out of Sandvik. I believe there is a cost associated for this, but we can definitely talk to you um, as far as how this will all work and see if it'd be a good fit for your application. Uh, but again, it is gonna be looking at Sandvik and their tool library that's always up to date and allows us to bring that in into Mastercam and program directly with those tools. Otherwise, there is a, another importer here called the Machining Cloud. It allows you again to bring in those 3D tool assemblies that was uh, on the cloud directly into Mastercam. This will definitely save you some time and effort and making sure that everything is properly hooked up in here. Uh, the importer does not require a server connection um, or require it to be online, but it is going to be directly importing from a local file that is saved. So that's all I got as far as the tool management here. If anyone has any questions, please feel free to ask those at, at any time here. Otherwise, I'm gonna go ahead and pass this back over to 